Hello everybody, it's me, Tippy Town. Welcome, welcome. And today we'll be doing a quick no-nonsense analysis of the new Legend of Zelda, sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild E3 2021 teaser. Um, this came out yesterday, there's already a lot of hype, a lot of videos and things to watch about it, but this is going to be no-nonsense. We're just going to stick to things that we already know exist in this series of games, just Breath of the Wild, right? We're not going to reach out for anything. We're not going to make any silly speculations. We're just going to try to be as concrete and as factual as possible. So let's watch it once, then we'll go through another analysis part. Bye, Zelda. I'm gonna miss her. This shot was so good. I, I love this. Uh... See, that looks sick. That looks sick, huh? I'm excited for that. And then this is another, like, great money shot. Okay, let's go. No nonsense. Let's start. Okay, first thing we see here, our boy, our titular boy. Link wielding the Master Sword, clutching at his arm in pain while Malice in a Princess Mononoke fashion-esque eskness. Oops. Consumes consumes his arm. Right, which is a quite a large difference than what we saw in the previous in the previous twenty nineteen teaser in which the spirit hand latches onto Link. Um, Zelda fall oh I forgot. Let's just look again in Dorf real quick. He looks good. He didn't age well, but he looks good. He looks very villainous. Look at that disgusting. <sighs> Bye, Zelda. No more playable Zelda. Sorry, guys. New Link. Whether it's a new character or same Link. At least it visually presents differently. So we can assume that there's... It's definitely like another... A new character in that regard. Some Skyward Sword looking looking device. I like this guy. Let's real quick. Real quick. Look at those little cheeks. Little smile and like kind of squinted eye. Very friendly. I don't think this this, this guy's going to do us harm. I like these new Boko Moblins. They've evolved. They've gotten smarter. They have a full horns now with a defended talus. Hope, hopefully the enemy intelligence has increased. That's what I'm hoping for, that the enemies are smarter to fight and adapt better instead of just having a bunch of new enemies that just do the same thing. Uploading the spirit hand. Yep. Reverse stasis in which sends something back in time. Did you notice... The moblins have a new a new head thing too. They don't look this they don't look the same. Look, he's got a little hat or something. That's different. This guy too. They look different. They don't look the same. This is cool. I like this. It's kinda icky. Look at that. Link has this new fire shield item thing that he's able to burn down this spooky monster. Creepy grass, um, yucky buggy thing. Traveler's sword? Traveler's bow, I think. So I'm. this might be a new dungeon item. I'm hoping, right? 
This, I think, is a traveling waypoint. Okay. I don't really have much to say about Hyrule Castle floating in the sky in the shot, except that it looks good. But um, okay, let's get in. Let's get into like the theory part. What I think. So. So this is this is what happens first, right? Link and Zelda go in the cave. You know, we saw that one. They find Ganondorf. There's the spirit hand, right? Looking all spooky and stuff. Something happens. Zelda falls, right? Something happens that makes Zelda fall. Link reaches out for Zelda. The spirit hand grabs him. Bye bye Zelda. We see we see her, you know, the rest of her fall. Um The spirit hand fuses with our boy Link. Right while they're in the cave. Zelda's gone, you know, she's she's who knows where. Then Link takes out the Master Sword with his newly fused his newly fused hand, right? Something happens. You know, he's covered in malice. He can't find him back. Bye bye, Master Sword. Something happens to Master Sword. Bye Fi. Bye Zelda. And so what what is the way that we're going to combat this new evil, huh? A lot of people are speculating time travel, but how are we gonna time travel? This this guy is the answer to our, our time traveling dilemma. How are we going to time travel? I think, and this is just what I think, I think this is the hero of 10,000 years ago. Short pants, green tunic, long, unrestricted flowing hair. He has a more primitive or ancient look to this link, definitely. Um, the Sheikah emblem is different, which doesn't make sense, I guess. Um, I don't know. It might be a variation of the Sheik Emblem. This is probably before the Yiga clan separate and become their own thing, right? So that we know it's old if the Sheik Emblem's looking kind of funky. This buddy looks like Skyward Sword technology, honestly. And look, this is our modern link. Hair tied up still. Oops. Let me go back a little. Oh, we can just progress forward. There's another shot of him. Hair tied forward, right? See, I think this is Link's waist. Link's arm, the claws have just turned into really nice nails. So see, modern Link still exists, still kicking. Looks nothing like ancient 10,000 hero, hero 10,000 years ago, Link, right? So what's up with that? See, he looks pretty modern to me. He's still progressing forward modernly. I don't know what's going to happen. Oh, and look, there's ancient, my theorized ancient Link again in his uh, traveler's waypoint. So basically, what I think is going to happen, right? So we saw in the beginning, Zelda by Zelda, you know, with the sword. Link by Zelda and the Master Sword, something happens. So how how is the how is the time travel gimmick going to work in this game, right? An Ocarina of Time and Jorah's Mask. And by the way, don't complain about time travel. Every Zelda game has time travel. Every main Zelda game has time travel. Ocarina of Time, literally called of time. You use the Ocarina of Time. To travel back and forth through time. Majora's Mask, you you live through and experience the same three-day cycle over and over again until you're able to overcome the evil. When Waker, you are sent down into the depths of the ocean to find uh, the forgotten land of Hyrule, stasis frozen in a time which no longer exists. Twilight Princess, using the Master Sword as a key to the pedestal's lock in the Temple of Time, you're able to travel to the past. Although brief, you still time travel. And then Skyward Sword, you have time shift stones that send you even further to the past. And then we have Breath of the Wild. So how do we time travel in Breath of the Wild? It's pretty easy. We did not physically time travel like some of these other games did. We experienced memories that were so visceral and so real that happened in the past. Things that have already happened that could not be undone. But Link is still able to experience them. And we know this from Breath of the Wild 1. We have seen this happen. This is not... A speculation this is confirmed when link pulls out the master sword for the first time in breath of the wild we get a whole memory cutscene of phi zelda telling some message to link and then we see the cutscene of zelda fully awakened to her power putting the master sword back in its pedestal saying that your master will come to you 
That's not Link's memory. It's one of the memories. It's not Link's memory, though, because Link wasn't there. Link was in the Shrine of Resurrection, <laughs> dying, dead, coming back to life, sleeping. But Link is still able to experience that memory as, it w as if it were his own, just by simply grabbing hold of the Master Sword, which Fi in the Master Sword is a living thing, not in the same way that we understand sort of living things to be, but there is a life to it. There is a spirit to it. So now let's say the spirit hand here, which has welded itself onto Breath of the Wild Link. Let's say the spirit hand belongs to our friend, the hero of 10,000 years ago, right? Let's say it belongs to this guy. And that this is not the link from Breath of the Wild. This is the hero of 10,000 years ago. How do we get here? Why are we playing as him? Well, we know Link, you know, Breath of the Wild Link is still on the underworld, overworld of Hyrule, trying to navigate around, has to save Zelda. We saw him in a dungeon of sorts, right? See here, we see him in a dungeon of sorts. So maybe in order for Link to progress in the game, he has to use his newly f new his newly founded companion, the Spirit Hand, and he travels back in time through the Spirit Hand's spirit or whatever, and experiences the memories of the ancient hero ten thousand years ago. So in, in gameplay that translates to this scene, Link Link is on that table before right. Where is it? Where's the shot? Link is let's say Link's at Robbie's ancient tech lab with Pura and Robbie. And there he's under something. They get this new fitting for him for the spirit hand. And then Wu, she's able to travel back and experience the memories. And then that translates to this segue cutscene. And it's now Link's conscious, almost like in an Assassin's Creed-esque way of experiencing the past. But we get to play through it, but these things have technically already happened. However, that's fine because the information and resources and tools that Link finds in the memories of this ancient hero 10,000 years ago will help him progress in the contemporary time. Or at least that's what I'm thinking. And we know memories are visceral things in this game because in the in the last few things that came out in Breath of the Wild, which is the DLC, that's the most recent thing we have to look at to see what, what influence would be on this game, right? Is the DLC. And we know that in the Champion's Ballad, Link is able to refight the Blights through the memories of the deceased champions as they experience them in the illusory realm. He's able to fight his fears and memories and regrets and overcome that. So we know Link can, in a way, physically go experience something in the past that has already happened through just through his mind. And we were able to play the same way as we would play normally. So I think that's what's going to happen because this 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 link, this new feral link, hot hot hair down link, presents much differently. And hopefully, when um, let's get a let's get a good shot. I'm gonna I'm gonna put the ancient ten thousand here tapestry link here, but I think it's a it's a pretty good case because we can't see we can't see the upper world anywhere from Hyrule, right? But we know it's not so high as we can see what is the Ridgeland region below. But here in Hyrule Castle flies up into the sky, right? We don't even see see it anywhere. So I think that's how the time traveling is going to occur. We're playing a binary adventure. This Link is not the same Link as we played in Breath of the Wild 1. But it's the hero of 10,000 years ago. And Link is playing through his memories to gain the information, whatever key, puzzle, unlock knowledge to get to progress forward in these new dungeons in the contemporary Hyrule to save Zelda and stop Ganondorf. And so he's going to alternate between past and present without actually physically going to the past and altering the past. He just needs to see things that have already happened through the memories of the spirit hand in order to progress, I don't know, become a better hero, something of that sort. So I think that's the only concrete thing we have for now and that we should aim to seek to consider Link like it's like it's like Breath of the Wild 1. Link finds the memories except he's able to travel back in time in that memory, play through that sequence 
you know, find out where the key is for a dungeon, then in contemporary time, he's able to go into that dungeon or something of that sort. That's what I'm thinking is going to happen. I just know that there's, it's, it's just hard to see these two links being the same person exactly when they present so differently. Again, though, this is all just speculation, more or less. I do have some facts, at least for the, for the means in which time travel could occur in, breath, in this new game. But uh, that doesn't explain the narrative, but I think it's a good idea because it's based on things that we know have already happened and can happen in, this, in the Breath of the Wild universe of games. So I think I'll just leave it. I'll leave it at that. So if you enjoyed the video, if you have any rebuttal and comments, thoughts and whatnot, or if you liked it, leave a like, comment and subscribe. Follow me at Twitch at twitch.tv slash tippytown to catch my live Let's Plays and other playthroughs of games that I don't necessarily put on the channel. <clears throat> Likewise, if you like more Zelda talk, check out the Nehru's Wisdom podcast, a Legend of Zelda podcast, where we go in-depth into things and have silly, fun conversations and whatnot. And that's it. Yeah, everyone, thanks for watching. It's been Tibby Town, and it's been real, and it's been real fun. So I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out, and goodbye.